Hey, we see it's uh, Jonathan, your cheap and cheerful record collector. I hope everybody's doing well out there today. Um, it's a little cloudy day here in Maine, but that's okay. Um, things are starting to open up here, and uh, last weekend, uh, Brian from Shamrock and Records and I went out for uh, digging for some records, went downtown Portland. Uh, a couple stores are open, a couple stores are closed. Um, found some good things, so I thought I'd do a new finds video. Um, a lot of jazz and some stuff I bought. Uh, well, I'll tell you as we go along. Um, here's to you, little little rosé to get the evening started. Okay, so uh, I'll put this where I'm not going to spill it. There we go. All right, first off, uh, what's actually what's playing in the background is um, Clifford Brown. This is a uh, double album from Limelight Records. Um, it's in mono, a promo copy I picked up. Limelight does a lot of uh, compilations, obviously it's a comp from him, but they always do a nice uh, pre presentation. Inside, pasted in the nice booklet with uh, photographs of Clifford. Um, more photos, and what I love is that the, uh, oh, here's this, I'm sorry, it's a fold-out, you didn't realize that, big three-thing fold-out, and at the end they have all, every, uh, information about the different songs, so the first one was, uh, Cherokee, recorded in 1955, with the Max Roach Quintet, uh, Clever Brown on trumpet, Harold Land on sax, Richard Powell piano, George Moore on bass, and Max Roach on drums. So it goes all the way there, 55. Some songs have uh, Sarah Vaughan, and some have uh, Dinah Washington singing, but uh, great stuff. The late, great Clifford Brown. So I picked that up, really happy with that. Uh, first, I'm sorry, the first of a bunch of jazz albums I got recently. Uh, this one, another one, Art Farmer, uh, flugelhorn player. This is a 1963 uh, original stereo, uh, first issue stereo, with a Jim Hall playing guitar, and um, Steve Swallow on bass. And it's that really nice orange and blue Atlantic uh, label. Like I said, 1963 original stereo pressing. VG, not VG plus. I can't give it that much. Probably a VG, which I usually don't buy. I'm not real happy with the quality, but uh, I'll hang on to it for a while. Also picked up this weekend, Sonny Stitt, Stitt Plays Bird. This is a uh, 69 uh, co um, reissue of a 64 or a 63 uh, original pressing. Really nice. Um, also, just happens to have John Hall, Jim Hall playing guitar also. This is on the uh, regular Atlantic red and green label. Uh, this is uh, the PR. If that means anything to people, it's a pressing plan, I guess. Uh, this is a great album. Uh, Sonny Sid plays all uh, Charlie Parker tunes. Um, Ornithology, Scrapple from the Apple, Parker's Mood. Um, uh, etc. So just beautiful, great recording, and this in great condition. I'm really happy to pick this up, but not expensive at all. Love Sunny Stitt. This one I got at Goodwill. Um, I wasn't sure, but had one person in it who sort of pushed me over the top to make the decision to buy it. And it's a movie soundtrack from 1965, a soundtrack for a movie called, uh, Mighty, uh, Mickey One, which was a movie, uh, written and directed by, where is he again, Arthur Penn, starring Warren Beatty. But obviously the reason I bought it is because of Stan Getz playing uh, saxophone in it. And it's, it's I listen to it today, it's, it's good. It's, um, it's definitely movie music. You can tell uh, it changes a lot. You can, you can sort of picture in your head mind the scenes that are going on. There's obviously a scene in a jazz club or a strip club and uh, different musical uh, interludes there, but the, Stan Getz is always great, and it's sort of a fun listen. Uh, love the picture on the back. 
obviously in a steam room, and there's the young Warren Beatty sitting down. So yeah, uh, soundtrack to Mickey One. Also picked up, this is a new copy I picked up at a local place called uh, Bull Moose Music, and this is the uh, Blue Note 80th anniversary issue of um, Herbie Hancock taking off with Freddie Hubbard, Dexter Gordon, Butch Warrens, and Billy Higgins. Doesn't get much better than that. This is fantastic, Rick. I'm just so happy with this. A 2019 release, yeah, so it's a 19, I mean, the 80th anniversary. Originally released in 1962 and has his fantastic version of Watermelon Man on here, which I absolutely love. So real happy with this on Blue Note. Um, those 80th anniversary pressings, really nice. A um, couple more jazz. This one I'm sort of on the fence about. Uh, live at Eddie Condon, Live at Condon's. Eddie Condon uh, plays on this, obviously, along with uh, Peanuts Hucko playing clarinet. You know, they don't, don't make names like that anymore. Uh, it's sort of like modern um, Dixieland, 1960, uh, made it in the, uh, 1960, recorded in 1960. It's okay. I, li I really like the cover, and it was really cheap, so I think I'll probably hold on to it. Uh, next one I love. This was also a, uh, can't remember where I got this one. Oh, I think I got it up in uh, Freeport. There's a um, Antique Mall guy has a booth there. And I think I got this there. Um, Roy Eldridge, Little Jazz, Swinging on the Town. Um, with Ronnie Ball, I don't know, piano, Benny Moten on bass and Edward Locke on drums. This was great, it really, you know, not quite hard bop, but definitely bop. And uh, on Verve Stereo, nice Verve Stereo label, and in really good condition, so really happy to pick that up. Um, I was watching a video, I can't remember who it was, um, was talking about uh, when they did the Women Singers, he mentioned Carmen McRae, and I didn't have any Carmen McRae albums, so when I saw this, I jumped all over it, and it's it's really good, much better than I expected it to be. I really like this a lot. So it's Carmen McRae with a small band, uh, um, one, two, three, over the five five piece band, recorded live in a club, and it's just wonderful. What a great voice and what a great uh, interpretation of all these songs. So uh, my first, but I'm not going to be my last Carmen McRae album. Live at Birdland West. Um, while I was up there also, I saw this, and even though the cover is not in great shape, I had to pick it up. It's Jelly Roll Morton, and this is Boyhood Memories, Volume 1, and it's great. He, uh, a lot of his interview with uh, Jelly Roll Morton talks about growing up, his influences. Um, of course, to hear Jerry, Jelly Roll Morton tell it, he created jazz all by himself, but uh, that's a little bit, uh, saying a little bit too much for it, but uh, what a great record. Uh, it says here, a 12-volume set of long-playing recordings derives from material originally set down over a five-week period beginning on May 21st, 1938 in Washington, D.C. So it's all about, and he died in 1941, so it was right before he passed away. And he talks about uh, growing up and the influences and then playing music to illustrate uh, different times of his career. And, uh, I mean... You can't say enough about Jelly Roll Martin. I mean, he was instrumental in the creation of jazz, even though he may not have created the whole thing himself, which he would tends to say he did. And it's on the Great Riverside label. So that was really a great find. Happy to have that. And then I picked this up at Goodwill. Um, I remember the movie very well, but um, it's a movie called Pretty Baby, and that's one with Keith Carradine, uh, Susan Sarandon and Brooke Shields about the whorehouses and the district in New Orleans in the uh, turn of the century. Um, what's great about it, the music, of course, is all uh, New Orleans, uh, Dixieland, uh, King Porter Stomp, Tiger Rag, um, Wine and Boy Blues, Ragtime Dance. So it's really good and just enjoy the hell out of it. Again, I wish it was a little bit cleaner than it is, a little bit uh, on the uh, scratchy 
pop side with the way you play it. Uh, seems to be those recordings from the 70s and 80s look better than they sound, and a lot of the recordings from the 50s and 60s sound better than they look. They earlier recording things, they could take a beating and they still sound really good. Whereas some of the ones from the 70s and 80s look fine, but just not so much. Um, another record I picked up, excuse me, um, picked this up at Goodwill the other day. They had a bunch of um, albums by this gentleman. I'm not a huge fan, but I decided to give this one a try and I'm really happy I did. And it's a Glenn Campbell. This is the astounding 12-string guitar of Glenn Campbell. And that's why I got it, because it's an instrumental album, and it only has uh, a very sparse production, which I like, no strings. It has, uh, he plays 12-string guitar throughout the entire album. Um, has a bass player, drummer, Hal Blaine, and banjo, Roy Clark. And he does everything from Puff the Magic Dragon to um, Walking Down the Line, um, La Bamba, this is this land is your land, uh, 500 miles. But boy, if you uh, like guitar pickers, this really shines, and really great album. You can see that you find Glenn Campbell stuff everywhere for a buck or two all over the place. Um, they had a bunch of his other albums. And I sort of passed through, but I saw this one. So I think it's an instrumental. So I checked it out, and it's a straight instrumental album. Really, really great. There's a picture of the young. Glenn Campbell there. So, if you like guitar picking, I would definitely suggest checking this one out. Um, local store we go to a lot here in Portland. He's dropped his prices. I think maybe he's uh, needs to raise cash after being closed for a couple of months. Uh, bought a couple of rec records that were much less expensive than I'm used to. And I saw this one, had to grab it, and it's um, Dwight Yoakam. And this is his album, Buenas Noches, from A Lonely Room. And I paid five, $5.25 for it. And I, according to this guy, it's like a $12 record. So I was real happy to pick this up. I only have two uh, Dwight Yoakams now, so I need some more. But this is great. I love this record. Um, anyway, can we go through the song? Can't make, it's, it's written in red, so it's really hard to read. This is his second album, I'm pretty sure, second or third album, and sounds beautiful, sounds almost brand new, so I'm real happy to get that. Dwight Yoakam. Uh, this one I haven't listened to yet, but I really like the artist, um, and it's Eric Von Schmidt, who's a Boston folky in the 60s and 70s, and this is his album, Who Knocked the, oh, Who Knocked the Brains Out of the Sky? Um, 1969. Um, again, I haven't listened to it yet. I've heard a number of his stuff. And, uh, a great folky. The, uh, liner notes were written by Bob Dylan. So that's what it gives you a little bit, uh, credence there. So there you go. On Smash Records. You know, a Smash Record label from uh, Jerry Lee Lewis. We did a lot on Smash Records. Next two records, again, were the one I got up in the uh, place up in Freeport at the Antique Mall, and two records by the same guy. Um, he used to be in a band called Pearls Before Swine, and it's Tom Rapp. Um, don't see his records around much, so whenever I see anything by him, I'm quick to grab it. Very English folky. Um, really enjoy his stuff a lot. I think I actually think this I like this record better than the other one, but they're both really nice. Uh, you know, not the greatest voice, but really interesting singer, great guitar player, and uh, again, very English, folky kind of stuff. Really enjoyed this. These are also from the uh, late '60s, early '70s. Should have done some more research before I started the uh, video. Anyway, Tom Rap. If you know Pearls Before Swine, you'll know him. If you don't know it, definitely worth checking out. I saw this one everybody's been raving about. I, I love this singer, and I, for some reason, this particular album has escaped my collection until now, and it's the Rod Stewart album. Um, it's also the same album, which he's something about a raincoat. This guy, he's 
guy with a raincoat, the kid on it. Um, that's the English production uh, pressing, I guess. Uh, when I checked it out, it turns out this one came out before the English one. So this is actually the first uh, pressing. He does Street Fighting Man, Man of Constant Sorrow, Handbags and Glad Rags, um, I Wouldn't Change the Thing, Cindy's Lament, Dirty Old Town. Includes uh, Ron Wood on guitar and uh, Keith Emerson on organ. What a great album. Really. Love that blue-eyed soul. He's got it. Rod Stewart. Next one, this one I paid a little more for and um, has a little warp in it, but still plays fine. And I love this guy. Uh, very eclectic, uh, edgy, early punk. Jonathan Richmond and the Modern Lovers. And this is uh, rock and roll with the Modern Lovers. <clears throat> I have one or two of his albums, but when I saw this, I, I couldn't resist. Jumped all over it. It has uh, my favorite song on here. Um... Ice Cream Man, <laughs> Dodge Vegematic, Wheels on the Bus is so great, so great. Instead of being an angry punker, he was a, a funny punker. And everything was uh, tongue in cheek and just just so much fun. Great to, great music. Um, 1977 on Berserkly, and it came with the original Berserkly inner sleeve, which is sort of cool. There's the Berserkly inner sleeve. Shows other bands on Berserkly Records. Greg Kinn, the, the Rubi, Rubinos, and uh, the great Berkeley label. Berserkly label, I'm sorry, Berserkly. So, um, Jonathan Richmond, the Modern Lovers, originally New England band. Um... We sort of have a, a, a soft spot in our heart for them being New Englanders. John and Richmond and the Modern Lovers. This one I also got at uh, Bull Moose. Uh, this was in their used section, but it's virtually brand new. And it's um, Jefferson Airplane, Crown of Creation. And it's the Sundays yellow uh, orange vinyl copy. And wasn't cheap cheap but it was much cheaper than buying it new and it sounds absolutely perfect and I've been wanting a copy of this record for a while it's been on my list uh, one of the few the other one I need to get by Jefferson Airplane is After Bathing at Baxter's which I don't have so real happy to have that even came with the original lyrics lyric sheet and the picture of the lazy dog and the lyric sheet so that was cool to get happy to add that to my collection Oops, get in there. There we go. While we're doing old time rock and roll, I also picked up this. Uh, this is an upgrade for me, and it's the Birds, uh, Mr. Tambourine Man. This is stereo. I had a mono, but the mono was really beat to hell, and this stereo is really clean. So even though the cover has obviously ring wear, I'm still really happy to have an original stereo um, copy on this. Well, actually, not an original, but a, a repress. But it's still. Super clean, and really, it's all about the music, isn't it? So this is a great album, and uh, actually, when I got this, I took out and played the mono, and I said, oh, I can't even listen to the mono, it's so scratched. So I'm happy to have a nice replacement. And then I bought a new record, which I don't buy a lot of new ones, but I've been looking, thinking about this for a while, and then uh, when I saw it, I think it was 25% off. Um, this, this store, Bull Moose, they have records, new records, and after they've been sitting for a certain amount of time, they mark them down to 25% off. And if they don't sell, then they mark them down to 50% off and finally 75% off. So this was at the 50% off and it's the last John Hyatt album. And this is the Eclipse Sessions. And I'm really loving it. It's uh, His voice has definitely changed. He's gone down an octave or two, a little lower. And it's on a beautiful colored vinyl. And like I said, his voice has definitely changed. It's not as high as it was, but it, it's really good. And uh, some great songs on here. Um, All the Way to the River, Aces Up Your Sleeve, Hide Your Tears, Robber's Highway. So definitely recommend this if you're a John Hyatt fan and haven't gotten any of his newer stuff. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, John Hyatt. 
the Eclipse Sessions. I think this came out in 20, 2018, so two years ago. And that, I think, will do it for today. That's all I have to show you. I just want to uh, thank everybody who's joined my, uh, who subscribed to my channel. I got a lot of new subscribers. And I want to remind people that I'm having my 800 uh, subs contest. It's true it doesn't end till uh, June 31st, so you got some plenty of time to get your videos in. But uh, check out one of my older um, videos, which talks all about the, what I want done for the 800 uh, subs contest. Uh, I've only got about a, do a dozen or le less than a dozen uh, co entries so far. So uh, if you, um, I had like over 200 people watching the uh, contest video. So get out there, make some videos. Let me know you've made them so I can get you on the list. And um, I say you got a couple of weeks yet, but uh, let's get on it, okay? <laughs> the more the merrier. All right, uh, until next time, I want to thank everybody for watching. And until next time, peace.